Hello everyone, it's Yintan here. Uh, I'm uh, we're in the studio about to watch Deepwater Horizons go up against Goonswarm Federation. Brett Thomas Thomas, what is this Goonswarm comp trying to do? Well, it's go it's a Golem double scope navy with a semi. Now they are all fit with crews, so it may be something this kind of like pseudo tinker comp we've talked about with cap transfers. We don't know, but it's definitely got that long range damage, so won't have problem applying to all these drone ships on the Deepwater Hooligan side if they run away. Yeah, meanwhile, this looks like a drone control comp from Deepwater Horizons. It's something they've used extensively over the course of their run in the opens. So we're going to look for them to see them try and take out a little bit of DPS here and then pull back, maintain the tank and slowly pick away at that support wing and reduce their chances of getting caught out and pinned down. Uh, Dirk Statil and the Goon Swarm Federation team here need to get on top of them and start putting out a lot of DPS. Also, we're going to need to watch for the Tackle War. There we can see Pixie Thief immediately taking DPS. Yeah, we're seeing all the missiles go from, from this... Goon Swarm team, all the cruise missiles are heading towards that Oneros in the cruiser, while all the lighter stuff is shooting that Garma. They know with cruise that this Oneros is just on a timer, especially since Deepwater Hooligans have dropped damage drones. They know all they need to do is plink away at that Oneros and it'll eventually go down. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch Tamox's positioning here because it's going to be absolutely crucial. There's a lot of fast ships here, but oh, is oh my, is that uh, the Scimitar tackled? No, he's just painted, but that's a lot of DPS going on to him. These drones are applying really well, and there aren't any rep bots on him just yet. He's taking so much DPS here, and there's nothing coming to save him. Yeah, it's just pure damage drones at the moment. The Scimitar needs to move. He's not. Really, wow, amazing gone. stuff. Yeah, it looks like he got dived into the back line and something managed to get a scram on him. The Garner, the moment the drone arrived, managed to get scrams on him. You're seeing him go down now as he pulls away, but it's just too little too late. Yeah, they do take out the Garma that dived for it, but that's very little in the way of compensation. A Karma for Scimitar is a terrible trade there. We are seeing Tamoxa start to take a ton of DPS here, though. These Golems and the Scorpion, sorry, the Scorpion Navies are both still capable of projecting throughout this arena. There's a lot of DPS left on the grid here. It isn't over. The problem being is they needed that scimitar to stay alive much longer than it did. They know they can break this uh, Oneros, it's just a matter of time because of range. So they needed to keep the scimitar alive a little bit longer and have the jackdaw and the garma just plink away at all of these drones while they slowly broke. It was inevitable that they're going to kill the Oneros, but it looks like it's going to be too little too late and they're going to trade it for the entirety of their low end. Yeah, those Skybreakers would have been so crucial in the long game, slowly killing off flights of Ishtar and Eos drones. They only have so many replacements, uh, and especially if they're carrying flights of lights and things like that for tactical purposes. Ah, this is going to be a tough match to pull back, but, you know, you can see that tank bar there from King Swan Federation. It's not chewed up yet, and that attack bar is st only as low as it is because they're shooting in the Neros. Once they swap onto these Eoses, the things are going to go a lot quicker. Yeah, you just see the bottom end of the Goon Swarm team go down there. The Skybreakers and the Garmas dove the back line the moment the Scimitar went down to try and get this Oneros tackle just to apply a little bit extra onto it. Now that they've all finally gone down and it's a single Jackdaw, the Oneros can start mitigating this damage if it has an AB, it can turn it on and mitigate all these cruise missiles because it doesn't look like it's going down. Wow, yeah, they're finally just holding him there. This is brutal, really. This looks like it might even be, you know, close to a slam dunk. Just one Garma lost. Yeah, these cruise missile comps that we've seen really need that little bit of extra application. Just something to lock something down. They knew if they shot anything other than the Oneros, the Oneros was going to keep it alive. But the Oneros is bleeding structure now. They might be able to keep it, get it down. Yeah, I know, as a man who spent EVENT uh, London just yesterday drinking with Dirk Satie, or perhaps he's uh, feeling the effects of too many beers last night as his team finally melts around him here. Tamoxa is going down, but it's not going to be enough. They've spent so much time doing it. They've lost almost all of their support, and their top end is finally being broken here. Yeah, they finally got the Oniros down. What do you think they shoot next here if this Scorpion Navy manages to survive? 
I think they're just going to go for Pride and try and kill off some of this support wing, try and give themselves a bit more positional freedom. Oh no, they're just going right for that EOS. They're going to try and burn through the EHP on their opponent's side faster, but that's going to be so difficult with the amount of DPS on the field left here. A race is going to be hard to win. Yeah, but that being said, that Scorpion Navy lasted ages, and this EOS is already in half armor. This is the power of cruise missiles against some of these larger ship hulls. Do you think they're going to clear the EOSs before they've even got onto the next Scorpion Navy? It's entirely possible. This isn't quite the same as the fraternity version of the comp and the comp that we, the version of it we've seen them fly in the past. Previously, they've had Ansel reps fitted to all of their ships, but you can see there, that defense bar, there's no purple segment, and that means that there's no active reps here on the field. This is going to make things a really difficult sustain war, especially if they can't apply, and especially if those that golem has any smart bombs. I don't think, I haven't checked to see if they've been firing this whole time, but if they are, it's going to be nearly impossible to kill it. Yeah, they are firing on the EOS, and there is some warriors on that Garma. The Golem's hoping to break the Garma and keep speeding up and stay out of range. But they have broken down one EOS, and they, I think they're going to chew through the next. Oh my god, could they potentially pull this back out of nowhere? Pixie Thief is taking DPS, like you said, but he's got a new on him as well, and that tackle isn't going to last forever. He, he might be cap-injected, potentially, but another EOS down here. Wow. Yeah, they're hitting the EOS into 70% uh, armor now. And the Garm is finally breaking away now that the Confessors and Ishtars have gotten on top of him. It's down to how tanky this golem is. I don't know if they brought, say, a flag golem. But if it was, it could potentially... I can confirm it's not a flag. So potentially this no, no, golem... No, no, it is a flag. Tank. Ren Tucker in the golem. That is their flagship golem. Look at the defense bar grow as he overheats everything. Look at it. It is gigantic. And the EOS is breaking here. Yeah, definitely. We're seeing this go golem hold on for dear life. He is smart bombing, so he can potentially smart bomb off the He's drones. Oh, I'm going to have to watch the drony HP here, guys. This is going to be a match you can't even see your screen. Yeah, he's got the Praetors. They're already in half armor. The Wasps, they're in shield. The, the Garma went down to Smart well. Bombs. And the Eos is nearly dead as well. Yeah, they're breaking through the Eos. They're trying to Smart Bomb off the rest of the drones. This Golem might live to win the rest of this match. There's... there's... They need to kill off those, they need to kill off those Confessors. Those Confessors are 600 DPS when heated. You can see that attack bar, it's nearly maxed out here from Goon Swarm Federation. But they need to sacrifice it. They need to take pressure off the field right now, or that Ren Tacker is going to break. Yeah, it doesn't he's look in half like he's... hull here. It doesn't look like he's going to survive. He's getting his last boosts of shields up and he's down. Holy cow. He's down, but Dirk Satil still has the potential. The thing is that now the Ishtars can just break away. He only has one new as a tackle module. There's no scrams left of the field, no webs. They can kite out the rest of this game, Deepwater Hooligans, with a one, uh, sorry, with a 20 point advantage. They, oh, wow. But he's cruised. They can't run forever. He's going to hit them eventually. So it's all down to whether they can survive. We're seeing Christian Mon in the Confessor take more damage. We've got 2 minutes 30 left on the match, 1500 DPS coming out from those Ishtars, 1200 from the Confessors. There's not that much here. It's going to break that, uh, it's going to break Duck eventually, but he has an XLASB. He has a lot of tank left, in, left on the field. You saw how long that previous Scorpion Navy survived under triple, e, uh, sorry, under triple EOS pressure. Yeah, so by the looks of it, he's assigned his light drones to the Confessor, and he's firing on the Ishtar, just maximizing the amount of damage he can do with profiles. We're seeing the Confessor drop into structure, and the Ishtar drop into low armor as well. Yeah, he's put his drones on the Confessor, he's put his missiles on the Ishtar, he's maximizing that attack bar with what little he's got to work with here, and he is going to possibly take both of them off the field. But he's, so he's so low now, He ha has he fired any charges yet? Is he bait tanking them? What's going we, on? I'm here? seeing charges happening now. He's now starting to ASB. I don't know if he's been ASBing before it, but there's the second charge. This is one of those unique cases where you don't want Tactical Shield Manipulation 5. The Scorpion Navy issue has so much of a resist bonus that everything you can hold is better, especially if you're bait tanking this hard. Once Rich, Th Rich Thugster goes down, though, it's still going to be tough now. He's in hull. I think they've got this. I think Deepwater Hooligans 100% have this here. 
I they think have this taken is, this match. This is shot definitely goes down, and it's down to whether he can survive with his boosts. I don't think he can against the two Ishtars and the Confessors. He'd have to delete a Confessor to even have a chance. God, what a heroic effort, though, from the Goonswarm Federation team here, feeding their scimitar early on and nearly coming back into this match. Let's head it back to the Andalus desk to take a look at this one. <laughs> 